Marvel Future Fight enjoyers, with an update around the corner, you're probably thinking to yourself, Alex, is now the best time to do a tier list? And under normal circumstances, I would agree. But with the changes I'm about to make to the tier list, these are not normal circumstances. Because genuinely speaking, when I've looked at the tier list the past few months, it doesn't really feel that reflective of how I feel about the game's meta. Now, there will be a much larger shakeup, I think, when the tier 4 game mode comes out next month. So we're sort of on the precipice of this tier list changing massively anyways. So I thought what better time than now to change it if we're just going to change it again really soon for the tier 4 game mode. So without further ado, boop, let's go ahead and look at this new tier list um, right after I do a quick little spring cleaning here to fix it up. There we go. That's all I had to do. It wasn't really all really that bad. So yeah, there we go. This is what the new tier list looks like. It's very, in some ways, it's it's quite similar. It, it still feels like the old tier list. But what I want to go through is basically all of the major changes that I feel much more accurately represent the game right now. Uh, and actually the game for, for quite a while. So we still have, going from like the least important to the most important stuff, we still have this, this sort of like rework category of characters on the right side. This hasn't changed at all. This massive list here of characters, uh, you know, fully like half of the um, half of the roster. You're talking like over 120 characters that need badly need reworks or they're only for Shadowland, only for Alliance Conquest. I renamed the title here, but yeah, that's basically what they're for. We still have the borderline list of characters basically has gone unchanged since the last update. We still have the lead support characters and the lead support gods, which has gone mostly unchanged besides the addition of Dr. Voodoo. And uh, Shuri, that has gone, honestly, mostly unchanged as well. But then things start to change here. We added a new category because uh, things weren't really, you know, it, like I said, things weren't really being uh, illustrated properly, in my opinion, with the old tier list. So we have a new category called Beyond Meta, or like Beyond the Meta. And these are essentially characters that have stuck around for way too long. Some people think that's a good thing because they get more bang for their buck. Some people think it's a bad thing because they're annoying as hell to play against all the time. Uh, and they're basically, you have a, a contingency of, of the cat of the player base just begging for these players, for these characters to get re uh, replaced at some point because they're just too strong. And no surprise here, Adam Warlock, Jean Grey are the two characters that fit this bill. Um, just like so obviously, so obviously they're just way, way, way too strong. Adam just got stronger with the team up collection, get it giving him another access to another 10% peers. It's actually insane. So yeah, I just need these like these two characters just need to be separated from everyone else because there's just so much more value. Jean Grey just brings so much more value the you know to your roster than anyone else. And Adam very similar to Jean Grey, not quite as strong as Jean Grey, um, but but quite similar. I would say you could probably put a gap between them but it would be kind of confusing, so we're just going to leave it there. Adam is a bit more PvP-focused than Gene. He's a little bit, bit less PvE-focused, but honestly, with 40% Pierce, which is what he can have, uh, yeah, I mean, he can be meta for whatever you want besides, like, ABX, ABL. So, yeah, we did that there. We added a new uh, category called Beyond the Meta. We also added a Coming Soon. Silver Surfer is a question mark. We don't know for sure if it's Silver Surfer, but we do know Ronin is coming soon, so it's nice to, to know, like, what's going to be happening soon in the game. We still have meta dominating, which I'll explain. The category has gone under a little bit of a change. And then we have, I've renamed this one to meta-ish gods, not just meta gods, because they're not quite meta, they're meta-ish. And then you just have meta-ish, which is just meta-ish characters that are not gods. So it's pretty straightforward, but the naming has been changed around just a little bit. So going from left to right here, meta dominating, these are characters that dominate at least two categories of content. So, for example, Luna Snow dominates ABX, dominates ABL. That counts as two. You can also say she dominates World Boss because she's available for like 28 different stages. So, yeah, that's that's three categories. Rogue, similarly, you've got ABL, you've got World Boss, you've got GBR. Same thing with that. You know, you sort of get the point here. These characters can dominate multiple different game modes. Um, if you have a character like Wolverine, you know, it's Timeline Battle, it's Alliance Conquest, and it's Other World Battle. So they have to be, you know, in the meta at, at a very high level, almost basically dominating the meta for multiple different game modes. Now, it doesn't mean that it has to be PvE and PvP game modes. It doesn't have to do both because then that's Adam Warlock and Jean Grey territory. It can be within the same realm. So, for example, Wolverine, Madeline Pryor, they dominate Otherworld Battle, 
Timeline Battle and Alliance Tournament, Alliance Conquest. They dominate those game modes, but they don't really dominate any PvE game modes. That's okay. They're still dominating the meta. You just have to understand whether it's PvE that they're dominating or it's PvP that they're dominating. But basically, uh, these characters here are very, very strong for at least two distinct game modes, if not more than that. Um, and when I say very good, I mean basically at the top. Uh, and then for meta-ish gods, you basically have characters who are really good, but they don't do what the meta-dominating kids or meta-dominating characters or, meta or beyond meta characters do. They don't dominate any game mode. So, you know, Star-Lord's really good for ABL, especially if you don't have Odin or Gladiator, but he's not at the top. He's also really good for World Boss, really good for GBR, but he's also not at the top. So that sort of goes, you know, that sort of thing. Hulk can be, you know, you can make it work in Otherworld Battle with Hulk, depending on the restrictions, depending on the Ben's list and stuff like that. You can make him work in Timeline, and he's still pretty good in AC and stuff like that. But is he dominating the way that Wolverine is? No, he's not, right? Is he dominating the way that Madeline or the way that Jean is? No, he's not. So that that's basically what holds back these characters from being over here in this category. Uh, and then meta-ish is just a step down from meta-ish gods. Uh, and then, of course, these two sort of, these three are basically sort of self-explanatory. So now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's cover the new characters that have been added to this list with the most recent update. So we have Icon added as a brand new character. Um, I think she's a great PvP character, but she's not going to dominate more than one PvP game mode without a lot of, without like a very high build. So I would say she kind of needs a max build if you want her to be anything more. Like, I think she could do pretty well for you in Timeline Battle, um, which is one game mode. But beyond that, if you want her to do well, especially in the autoplay game modes like AC and Otherworld Battle, you're going to have to give her a really strong build. So because of that, she's really at least one, if not two steps down from sort of dominating any sort of game modes. Uh, but I still think she's a pretty decent uh, addition to the game. Like, I like her. I like the fact she's a speed type, but she has this, like, reflect meta. You know, it does add a, a new dimension to uh, character typing that we haven't seen a lot of innovation in lately with the speed class. We've basically just seen World Boss uh, and, and ABX, ABL, uh, GBR uh, sort of, you know, speed characters lately. So it's nice to see. It's refreshing to see something new. Besides Icon, the other new character is Wendell, but you'll find him down here in the Shadowland AC Please Rework category because Wendell is terrible. Uh, there really isn't anything to say about him. He's just not very good. He may move into borderline or lead support if we see an Annihilator's PvP team become relevant with maybe Silver Surfer or somebody else. But until then... I would say he's not even worth, uh, you know, building up because he's just so, so bad. Um, besides those two new characters, we did get two uniforms for Gladiator and Beta Ray Bill. Now, in Beta Ray Bill's case, he's basically just a better version of Thor. So I thought, what better place to put him on the tier list than right above Thor? And it makes perfect sense. He's basically just a better Thor for everything but farming. But we know that Thor already gets beaten by Jean, uh, uh, Magneto, and Rogue for farming or, you know, thereabouts. So it doesn't really put him at the top anymore for anything. But yeah, Beta Ray Bill, excellent support. You could put him as a lead support god. Um, but I think he has enough damage and enough utility on his own to justify at least being meta-ish. I wouldn't quite put him in a meta-ish god category because he's not really pushing to dominate anywhere. Um, but I would say we're seeing uh, some very clear power creep, right? Beta Ray Bill is just straight up better version of Thor. Now, it's been almost two years since Thor got his tier 3. Or his tier 4, sorry. Not two years, but like a year and a half since he got his tier 4. So it makes sense that he would get replaced. But this is just such a thorough replacement. Uh, basically top to bottom. Uh, that it kind of makes you feel... It makes you feel a little bad for Thor, I would say. And then we come to Gladiator. The new combat hero male who dominates the PvE categories. In a way that we haven't seen from the hero side of things. Uh, since, you know, Black Panther and Moon Knight were sort of sharing the duty. Uh, and, sort, and sort of Namor to an extent. Uh, in different game modes he basically just dominates across the board you're talking world boss you're talking gbr you're talking abx abl he just dunks all of it he's just at the very top for all of that stuff no questions asked he's proc friendly he's rage friendly you know he basically gets it done no matter what whereas you had you know very specific builds needed for certain characters to sort of fill certain niches gladiators your one-stop shop for all things uh pve oriented he could have had PvP potential given his passives, but without iframe ignore and without any ways to stay alive, he really can't stand up to Madeline and Adam, especially since they, you know, counter him and they check his uh, combat typing as blast types. We'll see what the future holds for him, but at least right now he's very, very strong. I think, you know, with an iframe ignore skill, with a uh, immortality artifact, he could have been beyond meta. I think he was actually, you know, 
uh, position to do so, but I think he's in a really good place right now, sort of being the uh, combat hero PvE equivalent of Wolverine, where he just dominates all of the PvE content, where Wolverine is the top dog for combats in the, all of the PvP content. That about does it, though, for the new, the new characters and the new uniforms. It was a pretty small update thus far. We just had the four there. Um, the other notables that I wanted to mention, we did bump Sharon Rogers up from meta-ish to meta-ish gods. Uh, we did bump Black Bolt down because he's just sort of thoroughly been replaced at this point. Um, and then we did bump Odin up to meta dominating. I think Odin's a little bit underrated. I know Gladiator replaced him, but it's a very close replacement. And Odin is still really fast and really strong for PvE content outside of ABL. Plus, Odin is actually not bad for PvP. He doesn't have iframe ignore he doesn't have you know the, the other staples that you're expecting like reflect or revive or stuff like that but he hits really hard and he has and he is really tanky and he has a debuff cleanse lead which is not bad for pvp so yeah this is how the tier list looks right now i know it's not too much different but i want to leave you guys with the question of what do you think you know do you think gene and adam deserve uh, a spot in sort of this beyond meta category or do you think that it's sort of unnecessary compl unnecessarily complicated do you like the coming soon category? Um, and then finally, how do you think this tier list is going to change when the new game mode comes out? Oh, one more thing. Do you want an additional tag added for seasonal uniforms to highlight characters that are only good with their seasonal uniforms? Hit me up in the comments down below. Let me know what you think. Thank you so much for watching. Smash the like button. It helps with the channel tremendously. And I'll see you in the next one. Take care.